So am I the stop sign and you're the yield sign today? <laughs> <laughs> if you ever see me out on the roads, I either this or I have an orange one that looks like the cones. So uh, yeah, when I come into work sometimes, uh, if I have this on, you know, I'll say, you know, I'm, I'm here on my second job. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining outside or whatever. So I thought I'd work indoors today. Yeah. Hey, uh, folks, Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries, Northwest North Carolina, director for our professional center. Uh, happy to help you if you're in a, a job search, whether you're here in the Winston area or maybe elsewhere watching us online, just reach out on LinkedIn. You can find me. Uh, our services are free and we do work by appointments. So if you would just uh, reach out to me, we'll get you on the calendar and see what we can do to try to Try to help you. But every Monday we get together, Teddy and I do, and we share some stories and tips and talk a little bit about our upcoming Wednesday show. And this is a special one because yeah. we we have lasted longer than many marriages, Teddy. I, I know that, man. I know Two that. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Two years. Two year anniversary. We'll talk more about the show in a little bit. But first, Teddy, why don't you introduce yourself and maybe uh, then I'll, I'll talk some birthdays and, and this yeah. day in history. Yeah. Yeah. So for those who have never met me, I'm Teddy Burris. I'm first and foremost a LinkedIn strategist, but Burris Consulting decided to build a whole other division. So now we're teaching Google Workplace and Gmail. We've got a YouTube channel. We're about ready to build a website. We're about also going to build a, a Quora space all about you know, Google Workspace. Love teaching both LinkedIn and Google Workplace as business tools. It's a whole lot of fun. Um, and, I, and, and for anybody who wants to have a conversation about those tools, just call me. I'll chat about them all day long. So, so Randy, what, what you do some research on birthdays and stuff like I that. What did you find, man? I'll tell you, one of my earliest memories of the news story, in fact, I think I saw this on Facebook a couple of weeks ago. What, you know, what was your first <clears throat> significant news story that you remember? And it was either uh, Martin Luther King being assassinated or Robert Kennedy, because they both happened not too far, not too awfully far apart. But it was right around that same time. Anyway, uh, Ethel Kennedy, born on this date in 1928, that was Robert, uh, or is Robert F. Kennedy's uh, wife. Yeah. So there's that. And here's one, it, you, I bet you'll know the answer to the first part, but not the second part. Hmm. On this date in 1755, James Parkinson was born what do you think he's famous for given that last not, he's not the putt putt golf dude is he but. <laughs> <laughs> he, he yes i do know that uh, <laughs> somehow or another he was involved in the the discovery or the naming yep. of the part of parkinson's disease yeah it's just a horrible disease and, and hopefully you will be able to work on a cure for that so that's what you do know but here's what you don't know not only that but he and his son were the first to describe to describe appendicitis. Ah. So I don't know that they necessarily discovered it. And I don't know where the word appendix or why that name appendix is associated with that part of your body. That I don't know. I, yeah. and I don't really care to get into that because I, uh, I flunked out of med school. So or was it law school? Anyway, it was one of the two. I can't remember. On this date in history, there were a few things that happened. We actually got uh, Spain declared war on us on this date back in 1898. How's huh. that going for you, Spain? Huh? Why, why, why'd they do that? I, we ended up getting Puerto Rico out of it. So, uh, so we got that going for us. So, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, so uh, don't come knocking on our door, Spain, because we're going to kick your tail. Uh, the Civil Rights Act was signed by President Johnson on this date, 1968. And Teddy, you're a Mac guy, right? You're kind of you got 100% your Mac. Mac, man. I got a Mac at home and I got the uh, iPhone and this, and that. Anyway, the Apple One computer was released on this date in 1976. Yeah. Apple One mm -hmm. probably cost an arm and a leg and the computing power was probably in your little pinky compared to what's out there now, but you yeah. know, it had to start somewhere. So anyway, those are the, the birthdays and on this date, got a quick story for you. And it's, okay, man. all right. <clears throat> and it's, it, you, you know, here, mother nature, father time and whatever father time wins always eventually we all die. We all get older. And so my, my story is the passage of time. Uh, my, one of my sons and his wife, we're in town this uh, past weekend for a wedding 
uh, his high school friend, college friend got married. And so uh, as a result, I've been scurrying around trying to make photocopies of family history stuff. And I was looking through old folders at home of uh, when, when people pass away, you know, you go to the mm-hmm. funeral home and, and you get the little pamphlet that has their name and date and where they were born and all that. So I, anyway, so I was reading through these over the past week or so, and and it just brought back memories of when I was when I was that age years <laughs> ago, and as a kid, thinking, "Ooh, how old they were! Gee, wow, I'll never see them again." That, yeah, that kind of a thing. And now I look at it, and I see some of them died when they were forty nine, when they were fifty three, and I'm thinking, I'm sitting here in my sixties, going. How long do I have, you know? Um, but the, the whole idea is the passage of time mm-hmm. and to appreciate where you are in life. When we're young, we want to be older. We want to be, I can't wait till I can drive my car. I can get out of this house, be on my own. When we're older, we say, hey, if I only knew back then, yeah. I wish I could go back to being younger. So we're either always living in the future or in the past. And I guess just live in the present. Yeah. Enjoy where you are. And, and while life is never perfect for anyone, um, a lot of it's in how we perceive things. And uh, but again, just take take stock where you are and, and be appreciative of those who, who have come before you. Try to learn from them, too. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. I'm yeah. with you. Yeah. So, uh, uh, by the way, I've already written my flyer for my funeral. I, I should send it to you to get it proofread for me. OK, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> here's my story. Um. How, I mean, how many years have we been sequestered away? And, uh, you know, because of this pandemic, you know, two years, two, two years. Yeah. And so I, even though I really did, I believe a really good job of, you know, going virtual and minimizing the use of the telephone, doing more and more Zoom calls all day long. And I know a lot of people aren't fans of them, but man, it's been the best alternative for me. But I miss being out and about. I walked into 500 West 5th Street on the eighth floor yesterday to do a speech. My second speech since the pandemic when I was in in real life. And um, it was so cool. I I walked in there. I saw friends of mine. And one one friend of mine walked up to me and she did like this. Hug, hug, hug. And I said, yes. And, you know, we hugged hello. And I had a great conversation with people. And really was rich, way richer. And I forgot about that in real life networking, in real life conversations are often so much richer than we can do through the lens or we can do through telephone or email or LinkedIn messaging. And so my my thought was, wow, man, I miss this. And I'm building a business model where I don't need to be in person. But you know what, Randy? I need to be in person. I miss it. Mm -hmm. And so pay uh, pay attention, stay tuned, because you're going to see where I'm going to be in public more often because I really want to get back into that. So that's my story and a little bit of a teaser of the future. So is your parole officer okay with you leaving the state? Or Andy, that, come hey, on, man. We said that, we weren't going to talk that, about that. <laughs> <laughs> and one good thing, and I agree with you, where you can eyeball people, it's, it makes sense. But one thing that remote work does allow is that you can engage with people across country or in other countries where the the cost of transportation, whether you eat it or they eat it, is pretty substantial. And so it would need to be a, a rather large event for you to be able to make that, uh, you know, make that make sense for you. Hey, well, we've you got a great I show. I never go out in public, yeah. Randy, unless they're paying me a boatload of money. I mean, you know, that's the only way I could be how I am. I need your agent, man. I, I don't know who your agent is, but whoever that person is, I, I need to, to, to latch onto your coattails. Great show coming up, by the way. It's our second anniversary. We have lasted longer than many marriages, Teddy. Yep, Think we have, man. We, you know, you know yeah. how we pulled it off? We never see each other. <laughs> never see each other. <laughs> I've seen you in person twice, Three right? Times, two times. We had we had lunch and we went to a ball game. Went to a baseball game one day, yeah. And so there, so there's that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, our second anniversary show, show coming up Wednesday, eleven fifty five Eastern time. And so here's here's kind of the the premise for this thing, and and there'll be some surprises because we don't know where. And we've got some crazy people here coming on, right? So we don't know what they're going to say. But the idea here is, is to look back on the shows we've had. We'll have former special guests. We'll have uh, former attendees. Audience members. 
Yeah, audience members. So we're going to have a nice blend of people just kind of a reminisce and look back on some highlights, maybe some faux pas that we maybe the censors uh, kind of let slip by, but uh, just kind of get a sense, you know, the show we do is is for, well, for you, for the, the folks that, that watch. And so we've, we're inviting you onto the show and that's what we've done. We'll have about six, five, six, seven people and we'll share some ideas, uh, some anecdotal fun stuff and hopefully uh, plow forward into year number three. So there's that. And uh, also the, the tip that I'd have for you, and I know you harp on this a lot, Teddy, and I 100% agree with you. When you send an invite on LinkedIn, customize it. Tell me who you are, why you want to connect, um, how we met, just something. But I get a lot of those, what I'll call generic requests to connect. And I make it a point, and I would encourage you, if you also receive, not you personally, Teddy, because I know you like to have followers, and I get that. But if you're watching and you receive these invites from people that aren't accompanied with any text at all, there's no, here's how we met, here's why I want to connect, no, 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 nothing. And you're trying to decide, should I accept the invite or not? And that's up to you. And Teddy, you can talk about the strategies and I can talk about strategies to why you should connect or why you can send a message back and wait, see what they respond with or whatever. But if you do decide to respond and, 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 and accept the invite, take the time to do what the other person should have done in the first place. And that uh -huh. is to say, hey, look, I'm happy to connect with you, uh, but, but, but please let me know how I can help you, how we may have met. And you know what, if the person doesn't bother responding to that, the original inviter, fine, maybe you just, at the, maybe you just, then you just remove them as a connection. And they're still a follower, I think, aren't they at that point? Oh, yeah. Stuff? The moment someone hits that connect yeah. button, they automatically become a follower. Yeah. But the, the point here is don't just accept and sit there with your arms folded and wait for somebody else to make the first move. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's sort of like, Randy, real quick. <laughs> that's sort of like collecting business cards, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> how, how good about are that? they? <laughs> All right. Here's my tip. And it, it aligns with a lot of this. And not just about LinkedIn, but never turn down a conversation. True story. Sure. Just, uh, I just heard this story a couple of days ago. Y yes, uh, uh, last week. It was last Thursday. And here was a conversation. The guy said, um, oh, man, business is okay. It's pretty good. Um, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. He said, but he said, this is what happened. He goes, a guy calls me up and says, I want to talk with you about coming to my company. I have a great opportunity for you. I want to talk to you. No, my business is pretty good. I'm not really interested in going to work for someone. The guy calls him back again another week. Man, I'm serious. I have an opportunity for you that I really would like to talk with you about. And he goes, man, I'm, I'm just not interested in working for somebody. He says, it's not like that. And so they agreed to part with the, stop the conversation. The guy calls him one more time and okay. says, look, give me an opportunity to tell you about what it is. Let me pitch to you my story. And where I see you aligning. And if you, after you hear what I want to do and you're not interested in, we'll never bring it up ever again. So he agreed to the conversation. He took the job. He, they couldn't turn it down. He told the guy told him a story that was absolutely phenomenal. The opportunity is phenomenal. The work is exactly what he wants to do. The people is the kind of people he wants to hang out with. And here's my tip. Never turn down a conversation. You don't know what you're turning down until you hear the opportunity. True. And you know what? Even if you don't accept it and, and, and take advantage of it, you may know someone else that yeah. it might be a better fit for. And so uh, you can always help someone else, even if it's not ultimately for you. Hey, again, folks, great show coming up Wednesday. That's going to be coming up in, wow, two years <laughs> I'll tell you, two years flew by, Teddy. Yeah, uh, man, it's, it's been a blast. And I, what I really like, the fact that we have connected with so many fantastic yeah. uh, special guests and audience members. I mean, it's really mm -hmm. been fun to see that whole dynamic play out. It's been a, been a, yeah. been a blessing. Lucky lucky 13, April April 13th. So yeah, yeah. Uh, And I'll, actually, we're just over a year in doing these Monday shows, too. I just happened to notice that. And we're about a year and a week into that. So, yeah. oh, so there cool. you go. All right. All right, buddy.
Go off and have a great uh, couple of days, and I will see you Wednesday. Uh, I might I might wear my special shirt for uh, for that. You know, my my anniversary shirt. Good deal. I, I'll try to I'll try to remember to wear a shirt. How's that sound? <laughs> so, all right, dude. I'll see you later. See you guys right. later. See you, Teddy.